Hello and welcome to our today keynote speech. Today we invite Dr. Chen De Li as our keynote speaker, and the keynote speech topic is graph machine learning and its applications. Dr. Chen De Li is now an associate professor at Institute of Data Science at National Qinggong University, and Dr. Chen De Li's Research topics focus on machine learning, data mining, and their applications to social network and recommender system. In this keynote speech, the techniques of graph representation learning and graph neural networks will be introduced to show that what, where, and how graph machine learning can benefit different tasks in data science. Now, without further ado, let's welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Chen De Li, to give the keynote speech with the title as "Graph Machine Learning and Its Applications." Okay.、Um, thanks for the introductions. I'm very happy and honored to be here、uh, to give this keynote speech.、Uh, especially, this is、uh, my first time、uh, to attend、uh, PyCom. So、uh, I hope this talk can bring you some insight and uh, uh, can help your projects uh, uh, be be、uh, business uh, from uh, graph machine learning. Today I will would like to uh, promote uh, machine learning with graph. Especially, I will、uh, give you、uh, many example to let you understand that、uh, graph can be used to represent different kinds of data, and the graph machine learning, especially graph neural network, can help、uh, improve the performance of、uh, different tasks. I'm Chen Jie Li from National Qinggong University. Okay, first of all,、uh, let me just use a one to two slide to uh, quickly uh, recap what is machine learning. Machine learning, especially、uh, supervised learning, is a setting that, given、uh, some observed variable or features, and、uh, we also need to specify the prediction target y, then we can let the machine to learn the、uh, projections from input feature x to、uh, prediction target y.、Uh, what we need to provide is the training data, and、uh, our goal is to learn the mapping function f. That can help us to、uh, finish the projections、uh, perfectly. Then, after we can obtain the function f, then we can input some testing data, which is unseen data instance, to let the function f produce the prediction outcome. This is the general flow of supervised learning. We can test、uh, many real world data science applications、uh, based on the setting of supervised learning. For example,、um, in recommender systems, we can input the user's、uh, reason historic browsing history, and、uh, predict which item、uh, he or she would like to browse in the、uh, in the next time. Then,、uh, in machine translations, we can give in the text from one language, then the predicts、um, the、uh, text in another language. Uh, also, in computer visions,、uh, um, uh, signal voice, and also different kinds of applications. What we need to specify is different kinds of、uh, input data format, and、uh, we need to specify the、uh, prediction target. Then the function f is our goal to train and to up to to generate, so that we can use in the function to help produce the corresponding result. This is the example to demonstrate the basic flow of、uh, supervised learning to learn the function f. Then uh, today uh, we will focus on the data, especially on graph data.、Uh, we need to let you understand that graph data is very universal. We can obtain on access graph data in different kinds of、uh, application scenario. For example,、uh, in social networks and the social media, we can obtain a social network that connect people using their friendship. Also, in e-commerce platform, we have users and.、Uh, Uh, the corresponding items that user has already browsed or purchased, then we can construct the bipartite graph to depict the relationship between user and item. And also in Internet of Things, we have physical devices as nodes and uh, the uh, communications between devices as a link to build the Internet of Things graph. Even in、uh, text data or in Wikipedia, we can consider different kinds of knowledge item as node. For example, world can be node. Or even、uh, people or locations, different kinds of name entities can be known. If there are some relationship between entities, for example, work or occurrence, 
we can construct a work progress graph. Uh, and also in Wikipedia, we can use different kinds of relations. For example, uh, the uh, title script uh, uh, is speak English and the title script uh, nations is United States, so on and so forth. We can use such kinds of uh, different kinds of relationship to depict the uh, relation between different kinds of entities to have the uh, Wikipedia knowledge graph. Also in biomedical domain, we can construct a protein-protein graph to understand which kind of protein would like to interact with other kinds of proteins to understand how different kinds of uh, protein function work. This is uh, just a few cases to let you understand graph data is very universal. So uh, we would like to combine machine learning and the graph data. Machine learning is to learn the function f, and uh, they can project from uh, feature x to prediction target y. Now, uh, our x is the graph data. So we would like to uh, input the uh, graph data to a certain function f, which is learnable, and uh, what is our target? In graph machine learning, there are two very essential uh, learning targets. One is no classifications. The other is link prediction. No classification, uh, you can just think that uh, each node is associated with some kinds of label. And the no classification is trying to learn to predict uh, those unlabeled nodes. It's very uh, like a conventional uh, uh, multi class classification. As for link predictions, uh, the prediction target is to uh, find whether or not two nodes uh, will connect in the future. We would like to predict this right now. Uh, which kind of brain will happen in the future. This is two of the uh, fundamental tasks in graph machine learning. Let me uh, just use uh, some uh, example to let you uh, further understand uh, no classification and link predictions application. The first one is no classification. Uh, suppose we have a graph. Uh, this graph depicts how user interact uh, physically. And uh, suppose we have some uh, people uh, which are test positive uh, uh, in COVID-19, uh, that are uh, blue nodes. There are also some people test negative, they are, these are uh, green nodes. Uh, but there are uh, many people that never uh, accept some tests, uh, these are black nodes. In no classifications, we want to learn from this label node blue and the green and try to predict on those black nodes so that we can understand uh, whether the label is uh, blue or uh, green, so that we can understand uh, the coronal classification can help to estimate the potential COVID-19 confirmed case uh, based on the graph machine learning techniques. No classification is also widely used in to understand the public opinion on social media. For example, uh, suppose we have uh, the people's political tendencies, blue and the green, and uh, some people would like to reveal their political tendency labels, blue and green, in social media like uh, Instagram or Facebook. And uh, we would like to understand what is the uh, the uh, uh, status major uh, majorities uh, in social media. This black node we want to understand their political tendency. So we can uh, learn uh, based on graph machine learning uh, to predict the label of this black node. We want to learn their potential political tendency label. So uh, long classification can help uh, to do uh, less things uh, accurately. This is the just two cases to demonstrate uh, the real world scenario uh, on no classifications in social media or social network. Uh, the, the other task is link predictions. Uh, the most intuitive example on link prediction is in social network, we can predict whether or not two user will create friendship in the future. And this is for friend suggestions or friend recommendation. Uh, link prediction is also widely used in a uh, recommender system uh, in e-commerce platforms. We have the bipartite graph, uh, user connect to items that she or he browse or purchase in the history. We want to predict whether Alice would like to interact with a certain movie, and uh, it is uh, this text is the same to predict whether this thing will happen in the future. So this is the two cases to demonstrate the idea of link prediction. So, uh, what is the important? Uh, the, what is the most under uh, underlying idea in graph machine learning? 
In uh, recent years, uh, the most important directions in of graph machine learning is to learn the representations of data instance uh, from uh, can craft features uh, to learn uh, learnable feature representation. Conventionally, uh, we have we are given a graph data, and uh, we need to uh, construct the feature vectors for each node in the graph. For example, well, we can just compute node degree, node centralities, place rank values, so on and so forth, so that we can uh, extract different kinds of feature values and uh, construct the feature vectors for AB node in the graph. This is the handcraft-based approach. With this uh, feature matrix, each row is a, a node in the graph, and each color is the feature. Then we can apply a conventional machine learning model or flow to do the uh, different kinds of uh, tasks, like a node classification and link prediction. However, uh, it is not easy to come up with a comprehensive uh, feature uh, set uh, for AB node in the graph. So instead, with the progress of uh, deep learnings, we are resource to uh, feature learnings. We, we try to uh, learn to represent the hidden vectors of every node in the graph instead of handcraft manners. So we expect that, that the learnable feature vector for every node to construct the learnable uh, feature matrix can better perform than conventional handcraft feature matrix in different kinds of downstream tests, especially on no classification and the link prediction. This is uh, why this is the so-called representation learning in graph machine learning. Okay, so uh, we can say that uh, modern graph machine learning is try to do the representation learning on graph, or uh, the task is uh, can be generally uh, called uh, graph representation learning (GIL). There are two mainstream approach uh, of GIL. One is unsupervised. Based approach, the other is semi supervised based approach. In unsupervised based approach, uh, uh, it has another name, name embeddings. It is a two stage model. We, the first stage is to learn no embedding or learn to learn no uh, feature representation vectors without any label data. We just want to use in the graph data, the graph structures, uh, uh, along with the uh, some uh, no uh, initial uh, attribute values. Uh, to learn the uh, no embeddings. Uh, with the learn no embeddings, uh, the second stage is try to train another uh, models uh, based on the downstream labels uh, to uh, do the, our prediction targets. This is the two stage training. Especially on the first stage, we are try to learn the no embeddings without any uh, label data. The second approach is semi supervised approach. Uh, it has another fancy name or popular names uh, called uh, Graph Neural Network (GNN). It is an end-to-end -end training uh, framework. Uh, when we are trying to learn the null representations, it is the training is join uh, join uh, uh, finish uh, together uh, train together with the downstream label. So we are trying to uh, simultaneously generate the no embeddings, and uh, the no embeddings will directly use to produce the uh, final prediction outcome on the uh, prediction target label. This is the two mainstream approach. Today we will especially focus on introducing you a uh, semi supervised approach, especially uh, the grab new network part. Uh, for the unsupervised GIL, uh, here uh, I would just I want to use one slide, this slide, to introduce you the uh, basic flow of uh, unsupervised approach. The approach is that given a graph data, and uh, we want to project each node uh, into a low dimensional feature space, and uh, we expect that those nodes with similar colors will be projected close to each other in the embedding space. And those nodes uh, with similar label uh, are uh, nodes who are close in the uh, original graph space, for example, nodes, uh, are nodes with shorter uh, distance to each other or nodes with similar attribute values, uh, these kinds of nodes are expected to uh, project closely in the embedding space, uh, which means that we would like to have this node have very similar uh, low dimensional embedding vector. To have these projections, uh, different kinds of approach can uh, be used to realize this idea. 
and uh, we will not to go through the details, but we would like to let you understand that one approach is based on wall to vector, which is very well known uh, wall embedding approaches in natural language processing. We can simply convert the graph data to a, uh, a set of uh, no sequence and consider the no sequence as uh, the so-called sentence uh, in uh, text data so that we can directly apply wall to vectors to generate the embedding for every node in the graph. Okay, once we can obtain the low dimensional embedding vectors, then uh, uh, recall that our goal is to do the uh, uh, two tasks. One is no classifications. To do no classifications, uh, we can uh, input the no embedding vectors uh, to train the multi-label classifier, and we can uh, do the supervised training approaches to uh, generate the classification result. This is the very uh, uh, conventional approach uh, applied uh, supervised learning model like random forest or like the four vector machines to do no classification by input the no embedding vector here. As for the link predictions, we want to predict where the two nodes will link together uh, in the features. So the input is the embedding vectors of these two nodes. We can simply contact their vectors together and feed them into a binary classifier like the Jewish regressions to predict whether or not uh, these two nodes will link uh, in the future. So uh, with these settings, we can seem, uh, seamlessly uh, to apply unsupervised learning-based approach to generate no embeddings, then uh, apply conventional uh, the supervised learning approach for no classification and link prediction based on the learned uh, embedding vectors for nodes in the graph. Okay, uh, the other uh, uh, important approach in uh, graph machine learning is semi-supervised GIO, which is also called GNN. I always uh, um, uh, promote graph uh, machine learning or uh, graph neural based on uh, this sentence. Uh, this is sentence is uh, provided by uh, ASOP. Uh, this sentence says that a man is known by the company he keeps which means that if we want to represent or understand a, a person, we can resource to uh, he, his or her friends to understand uh, what uh, do uh, his friends or her friends look like, and then we can understand uh, the personalities of that people. Okay, so um, the graph neural or similar supervised graph representation learning is try to realize this idea, try to realize a friend is, can be understood by his company or her companies. So uh, the best idea is that given the graph data, uh, the, uh, the goal is the same to project every node in the graph into a low dimensional embedding space. Then uh, we can directly uh, using the learn embedding vector, for example, uh, ZA and ZB here uh, for downstream tasks like no cascading and link prediction directly uh, in end-to-end -end manner. Uh, because we are, we are now in the settings of semi-supervised learnings, so uh, we are uh, we need to train in end-to-end uh, -end manner. So the, the, uh, the key is that how can we project every node in the graph into the uh, a, a certain point in the embedding space. <clears throat> uh, the projection is uh, trying to realize the idea that a friend <clears throat> can be understood by his or her companies. Okay, suppose we would like to project the uh, node A in the embedding space. So uh, this is uh, our goal. So we know that node A has two, uh, has three neighbors, uh, B, C, and D. Okay, so we would like to uh, using the feature vectors of node B and node C and node D to learn to represent uh, the embedding vectors of node A. Now, uh, the same is the GNN or uh, gram neural network uh, learn, uh, to learn node embeddings uh, consists of uh, two main uh, uh, steps. The first step is try to simply compute, uh, for example, com combine the feature vectors from a node, a target node's neighbor uh, in here. Uh, we need to uh, combine the, the embedding vector or combine the feature vector of node B and C and D together. The combination method uh, can be uh, can be the uh, simply simple average. Uh, we can simple every compute the average vectors of node B, C, and D to be uh, an intermediate vector x average here. Uh, because we want to 
uh, our goal is learn to represent node A. So we need to consider not only uh, node A's neighbors BCD, but also uh, node A itself. So we can uh, further uh, learn two metrics, uh, W and uh, S, uh, which is our uh, learnable uh, parameters uh, in neural network settings. We are trying to learn to uh, a weighted sum that combines uh, the average vectors from no A's neighbors and uh, no A itself uh, to be the final representation of no A edge here. Uh, then to uh, improve the representation capabilities, we will feed that uh, edge embedding vectors to a nonlinear activation functions, and eventually we can obtain the the uh, the learn uh, representation vectors for no A. So in these settings, you can uh, see that the procedure is very, uh, very simple. One is uh, simply to compute the average from its neighbor. The other is try to learn uh, uh, share parameters. The parameters is used to uh, compute the weighted sum from uh, no neighbors average vectors and uh, no A's uh, self uh, initial feature vectors. Then combine them together, feed them into the nonlinear activation functions. We can generates the uh, embedding or representation vectors for no A. So this is the uh, one time executions of gram neural neural layers. Well, one time execution means that uh, we use uh, a node's neighbors, uh, one half neighbors to represent the target node. If we excuse this process two times, then uh, we can use in uh, node's neighbors of neighbor to represent uh, no A, because we can further using uh, a nose neighbors of neighbors to represent a nose neighbors, which means that uh, we can represent, uh, generate the embedding vectors of me, no B and no C and no D based on their corresponding neighbors. If we excuse this uh, uh, process two times, uh, we can uh, using uh, not only the first half, but also the second half neighbors to represent our target node, every node in the graph. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, with this very uh, toy example, you can understand that uh, a friend can be represented by his or her, her friend's uh, uh, feature vectors based on the graph structure. And uh, with the learn uh, embedding vectors, uh, we can directly apply the embedding vectors for different kinds of downstream tasks, like no classification, by uh, simply fit the vector into the softmax functions, then we can produce the classification result. Or even uh, for the link predictions, we can simply uh, use the dot products along with more functions uh, to produce the binary classification result to understand whether or not uh, two nodes I and J will link together in the future. Okay, so uh, we can arrange the uh, general flow of semi supervised uh, graph representation learnings uh, in these two equations. The first equation is called aggregations. We want to uh, compute uh, in the previous slide, we simply compute the average vectors from a nose neighbor's vector. So this is the first, uh, uh, the first step, just to aggregate the feature vectors from the target node V's neighbor. Okay, here uh, we have the neighbor set for no V and the every no every neighbor is called uh, no U here. So we try to aggregate uh, all of uh, uh, nose neighbors to be a single vector. The second step is combine. Uh, we try to combine uh, the target no V's, uh, uh, the target ta no V's uh, uh, vectors uh, with the, uh, the aggregate vector from its neighbors. So uh, to realize these combined functions uh, in the previous slide, uh, we are trying to use in uh, weighted sum to, uh, to fulfill this idea. So uh, in graph neural network, uh, in different kinds of graph neural network models, uh, they, are, they have different kinds of implementation manners uh, to realize uh, aggregations and combine uh, to become different kinds of graph neural network model like graph convolutional network GCN or graph attention network GAT or uh, graph stage. Uh, this is three of the most well-known models in graph neural network. So the, uh, if we put the graph neural network in the settings of general deep neural network, uh, it is 
uh, lack, it is very lack the general flow of deep learning will have the given input layer, input graph. Input graph is the initial embedding, which are nodes attribute values. Then we can stack uh, multiple layers. Uh, when we stack one layer, every node uh, can be represented by uh, one further uh, neighbors uh, in the graph. So we, if we stack two layers here to represent every nodes, we are trying to use in uh, not only uh, its first half neighbors, but also his uh, second half neighbors to re then to represent and generate the embedding vector for the target nodes. Then the learned embedding vectors will be directly uh, used to uh, to train on no classification, uh, link predictions, different kinds of downstream text in an end-to-end -end manner. Okay, this is the 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 uh, stimulus wise GIO uh, to come to try to deliver the main idea of this algorithm. Okay, so uh, let me uh, quickly uh, recap uh, the uh, mismatch part in this keynote talk. Uh, we are given a graph data. If we choose to uh, do the unsupervised GIO, uh, we are uh, the first stage is try to project every node in the embedding space. Then the second stage is train on downstream tasks uh, for different kinds of uh, tasks uh, as the prediction target. As for uh, if we go uh, uh, based on the semi supervised settings, uh, we are trying to learn the graph neural network. So our input is not, not only graph data, but also feature vectors that uh, associate on every node in the graph. We are trying to uh, have the end to end training procedures and uh, the training will uh, combine with the downstream test uh, so that we can simultaneously generate no embeddings uh, uh, and uh, uh, produce the final prediction outcome. The typical model of graph neural neural includes uh, GCNs, graph stage, and GAT here. Okay, so uh, I hope uh, uh, to this slide you can understand the basic idea of graph machine learning, especially semi-supervised graph machine learning. Now uh, we are going to, uh, into the path of applications. Now uh, in graph machine learning, the most important uh, uh, part is that what is the so-called graph data? Uh, we, in fact, we can have three kinds of graph data here. One is homogeneous graph, uh, which means that uh, every node uh, in the graph belong to a one single type. Every age in the graph is also belong to one single type. For example, in social network, every node is users and uh, every age is the friendship. Uh, so this is a kind of homogeneous uh, graph. The second graph type is heterogeneous graph. You can just say that there are different kinds of color here uh, that belong to different type of nodes. Uh, and we can also have different type of age here they can compose the heterogeneous graph. The third type of graph data is invisible graph. You can see that there are no links between nodes in the graph. It is hard to collect or it is impossible to access the uh, connections between data instance. In such settings, uh, we call that graph is invisible graph. Uh, in invisible graph, uh, we can assume that uh, Ideally, they have some connections between data instances, but we cannot uh, access that kind of data, the, the structural data. So in invisible graph, one may need to first infer the underlying graph structures, then using the uh, inferred graph structures for graph neural networks for downstream application. We will demonstrate you a several example case uh, in the following slide. So, uh, we will introduce you uh, the applications of graph machine learning based on uh, such three perspectives uh, in terms of uh, graph data type. So this is the list of applications we would like to uh, uh, show you in the uh, following slides. Uh, in, uh, we will show you that uh, how can we improve the performance of non classification and link predictions uh, in a setting of social media analysis and computational advertising. And also in recommended system and table data learnings, they the task can be cast into the uh, graph representation learnings in homogeneous and the heterogeneous settings. And uh, in natural language processing, computer region and time series analysis, uh, they, the task can be cast into try to learn the latent graph structures in invisible graph type and uh, using the inverse graph uh, to, 
to provide performance improve in different kinds of tests in natural language processing, computer vision, and uh, time series analysis. Okay, first of all, I will give you some advanced ideas, uh, try to improve the performance um, of no classification and link predictions, and uh, then the test can be, uh, can be provided by uh, advanced gram neural network model. <clears throat> Uh, in fact, there are two main limitations of existing homogeneous gram neural network. The most uh, apparent uh, uh, limitation of the homogeneous gram neural network is that we cannot stack too many layers in GNN models. In uh, different kinds of uh, models like uh, CNNs or even many fancy uh, deep learning models, we can stack the layer, the number of layer up to for example, 10, 100, and even more. However, in gram neural network, in typical gram neural network, it is uh, uh, difficult to stack too many layers because please remember that if we stack one layer, we are trying to use in one further half of neighbors to represent uh, the AB uh, target nodes. So given a graph scale is very limited, if we stack three layers, uh, every node is just to use in three half uh, three, uh, the number of half of neighbors uh, is three, so we can include too many nodes in to represent the target nodes. So if we stack, for example, five layers, every node uh, is nearly to use all of the nodes in the graph to represent uh, the every node itself. So it will uh, lead to the result that the, um, the learn um, embedding vector will uh, too similar to each other's so that we cannot distinguish every node in the graph. Here is an example. If we stack one layer, two layers, two five layers, you can see that uh, if we stack five layers, uh, uh, they have some nodes whose node embedding are very close to each other in the embedding space, which are reduced from, for example, uh, 20, uh, 32 uh, dimension, uh, dimensional vector in the embedding space. Uh, this uh, difficulty is uh, call over smoothing. We are over smooth the embedding vectors so that uh, too many nodes will become similar uh, to each other. Uh, it, it, it will uh, hurt the performance of different kinds of downstream tasks because we cannot distinguish every node. Every node are uh, nearly close to each other. And the other uh, limitation is that uh, we cannot let the node embedding aware of high or high level semantics. The high level semantics means that there could be some clusters uh, in the uh, graph data. For example, this is the social network. Some nodes uh, belong to, uh, for example, uh, students in the same department, and some nodes uh, belong to students uh, belong to the same club, so on and so forth. We have different kinds of clusters in the graph. So in conventional uh, homogeneous gram neural network, when we are learning to represent every node, uh, we cannot uh, use in the cluster information so that uh, the cluster labels cannot be encoded uh, in the uh, representation vectors. So we expect to incorporate the cluster information and then the cluster information to improve the embedding space learnings so that we can let those nodes with the same cluster can be project into close positions in the embedding space. This is our expectation. So here <clears throat> we provide um, um, a more advanced uh, gram neural network models, which are called hierarchical master passing gram neural network. Uh, given the gram data here, uh, we first perform the hierarchical clusterings. Uh, the level one is the original gram, then the level two uh, we perform hierarchical clustering. The first level cluster is based on the original graph to construct the cluster nodes. And if two nodes, uh, they are overlap between clusters, so we can create an edge to connect them to build a first level cluster graph. Then uh, using the same procedures, we can build a second level uh, cluster graph here. Uh, then uh, when we are trying to uh, you, uh, realize the uh, Graph machine learning or graph neural network procedures, the first step is to aggregation. The second step is to combine. We try to let the propagations of embedding uh, from lower level uh, to higher levels and to let the embedding can pass the uh, original uh, raw graph information to cluster labels. 
And eventually, uh, we need to bring the uh, cluster level information back to the original graph so that the original graph levels uh, embedding the needs can be aware of cluster levels information. Uh, by doing so, uh, we can encode cluster information uh, in the representation learning uh, in the original graph. Then after obtain the embedding vectors, uh, it, is, it is used to train end-to-end uh, -end, uh, with uh, uh, no classification or link prediction. We can find that with our hierarchical uh, training procedures, uh, the conventional or even advanced graph neural net model can get performance improved with our hierarchical message passing setting. Okay, so we try to uh, uh, understand whether or not our proposed hierarchical message passing manner can uh, better than the IP man. The IP man said that he want to beat uh, 10 Percent. So we find that our uh, the performance of our, our uh, higher hierarchical match passing models can better than IP man. I want to beat 10 on uh, not only no classifications, uh, six tasks, and but also on link predictions uh, with six tasks, we can uh, consistently outperform uh, uh, stack of BR models uh, with a very significant performance improve. So we can say that we are now. Uh, uh, we are not beat IP men uh, to beat more than 10 uh, uh, comp competing models uh, in the literature. Okay, so here well, we are now uh, give you the idea of uh, how uh, grand machine learning can be applied to uh, uh, different kinds of tests here, especially on no classifications and the link predictions uh, based on homogeneous setting. Now, uh, we would like to uh, Promote you the gram neuronal can be used to uh, recommend the system and also in tabular data learning. We will uh, show you some case. Uh, here, let me use a few slides to recap the general flow of uh, deep learning based recommendation uh, framework. We have user and interact with some items so we can construct the uh, user item interaction matrix. It is a, a binary matrix that depicts uh, user and item interactions. So uh, in deep learning based approach, we are given uh, a data, many data instance. A data instance is composed by uh, one user's interact with uh, one item. So this is, we have so many uh, user item pairs. It is our data instance for model trainings. So uh, the input to the deep learning model is uh, one user item pairs and uh, we want to learn uh, using different kinds of techniques to learn the representation for user and items and try to see whether user and items and benefit vector will match or not. If the matchings get higher score, so uh, we can predict uh, such kind of uh, user and item pair will interact in the future. This is the general flow of uh, deep learning based recommendation system. However, we are facing a uh, Challenge. The challenge means that information isolate Einstein issues, which means that uh, if we uh, separately consider user and items uh, and uh, not to consider uh, the potential uh, interactions between user and items, even the high order interaction between user and items, that it will let us to learn low quality representation vector for user and items in recommended scenario, which means that. Uh, if two users, for example, U1 and U3, they share common uh, interest on items, we want to let their corresponding embedding to be similar. Uh, likewise, uh, if uh, items uh, V1, V3, and V4, they are uh, interact by the same users, uh, these items tend to be uh, share uh, similar embedding vectors uh, in uh, representation learning. So we want to incorporate this idea. Uh, instead of trying to uh, 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 separately consider uh, AV user and items when we are trying to learn the representation in recommender system. So uh, we can uh, build a graph uh, based on uh, the e-commerce uh, collect data. We have a uh, user that interacts history with some items based on uh, clicks, uh, add to car or purchase different kinds of actions can let us to build a uh, bipartite graph between user and items. Even items may con contain some attributes, for example, items, categories, 
or uh, suppose we are have the song, so we have the singers, albums, album information, so on and so forth. If items are movies, we have the leading star, we have the movie categories, we have the movie ratings, uh, some kinds of such kinds of attributes can be considered as nodes to build the interaction between item and their correspondence attributes. So uh, even in users, among users, uh, if we are, have the users in the social network, so we can use in the social connections to create a user user social graph. So uh, we can try to use in some kinds of different kinds of information to build the, uh, con the structures that depict the uh, the connections between user and items. Then uh, given we have this graph structure data, so to better learn user and item uh, representations, we can uh, use in the informations uh, based on graph neural network to learn, uh, learn on the bipartite graph. Uh, for example, here, uh, the bipartite graph, uh, then based on graph neural network can let us to generate the embeddings of user and items and the embedding quality are expected to be better than conventional based approach in deep learning based recommended system. So um, for when we are trying to use in gram neural network for recommended system, we are trying to uh, learn based on high order connectivities, then connectivity can be realized, can be used to realize the idea of, of collaborative filtering. For example, uh, uh, why user uh, U1 will like, will, may like item uh, I4 because, for example, in this bipartite graph, uh, he, uh, this part is uh, users and uh, this part are items is because uh, U1 has ever uh, interact with uh, I3 and I3 has ever interact by U3 uh, and the U3 has ever interact by I4. So we have two paths that can connect uh, indirectly uh, between uh, U1 and I4. Uh, so that we can uh, learn from this bipartite graph uh, try, and try to generate the embeddings for U1 and the AB items uh, in the graph. We can expand the uh, the neighbors uh, for U1. You can understand U1 ever interacts with three items and the three, okay? These three items have ever interacted by some further uh, users and uh, we can eventually access to uh, the item I4 here. Okay, so with these structures, uh, we can connect uh, U1 and I4 uh, based on uh, gram neural network to learn the embedding for uh, every node uh, in the graph. Okay, so one typical model uh, uh, for uh, recommended systems with gram neural network is a light uh, GCM model. In that, in GCM models, uh, the procedure is very simple. It is try to is uh, it contain uh, two main uh, uh, step. The first step is match passing. Uh, we try to obtain the embedding vectors. Uh, for example, no use embedding vectors based on its neighbor. Given we are in a bipartite graph, every no use embedding vectors is based on uh, the uh, its neighbor item vectors. So we can simply use the neighbor embedding not neighbor item embedding vectors average. And uh, when we are compute the item embeddings, we are trying to simply compute the average of neighbor user embedding. Then we can uh, combine uh, AV layers embedding vectors, for example, simply concat or you just use the attention based pooling method to obtain the final embedding for user U and the uh, item I. Then the inner product can help us to produce the final prediction outcome. So this is procedure is very, uh, very similar to general gram neural network based flow. Okay, then. Uh, the next, I would like to show you, given we have time limits, uh, the, maybe this, this is the last part I would like to show you is that uh, graph neural network can be used to uh, learn to, uh, uh, for uh, tabular data. Uh, this is the most well-known models uh, in tabular data learning based on graph neural network. Uh, we have tabular data here. Uh, each row is data instance, is current, is feature. There could be some missing values in the uh, in the tabular form. This is the very general settings, and we have some prediction targets for it. It can be regression or classification task. Uh, the goal is to try to predict the label for data instance for all three uh, here. Uh, we can build a bipartite graph to represent these tabular data uh, in this bipartite graph. Uh, 
the one part is the data instance here, O O1 to O3. The other part is the feature. We have four features, so we have four nodes. If one data instance can contain some uh, feature values for uh, a certain features, we can let the feature value be associated on uh, the edges, uh, on AB edges between observations and the feature. So we can build this by pattern graph. With this by pattern graph, uh, when we are trying to uh, learn to predict the target labels, uh, we need to generate the embedding for uh, every data instance here, then using the embedding of every data instance to produce the final classification outcome. So this is the general uh, flow of uh, gram neural network uh, for no classification setting. And uh, uh, in the meanwhile, uh, we are trying to deal with the missing data issues uh, Remember that the feature values is associated on uh, edges in the graph. So uh, when we are trying to impute the feature values, uh, it is the same to predict to do the age regression. It is a, a kind of variance of uh, age prediction, link prediction. We are trying to regress the feature values on the edges based on the embedding of the intermediate neighbor node, uh, which is the instance node and uh, the feature node here. Uh, so we can join the chain to impute uh, feature values based on the intermediate, uh, the, the neighbor embeddings, observation embeddings, and the feature embeddings. Try to predict the feature values for imputations, and uh, uh, simultaneously using the no embeddings to produce the final classification outcome. These two tests can be chained together, so that we can, uh, uh, at the same time, complete the feature imputations and the no classifications, and try to. Uh, leverage the test correlations between imputations and the final uh, prediction targets to improve the performance uh, in tabular data learning. This is the case uh, for uh, tabular data learning based on gram neural network. Okay, so uh, given we have very uh, time limits, uh, let me just using one to two minutes to introduce you how can gram neural network can be applied to natural language processes, especially for test classification, because I think uh, it is very interesting idea and uh, interesting but simple idea. I I think many of you would like to uh, understand how can it, how can it work. Uh, the most well-known or the first model of the applied gram neural network for test classification in natural language processing is text GCN. Uh, in text classification, we are given a document and we like to classify uh, the document's labels. So, uh, but how can we represent the graph data uh, for uh, document classifications or test classification? Test classification? Uh, we need to first view the graph data. Okay, so what is the nodes in the graph? We have two kinds of nodes in the graph data. One is word and uh, the other is document. So we can consider that uh, these colorful nodes are uh, document nodes. If a, if a document node contains some uh, text terms, then we can link them together. So you can find that the document, uh, some documents are connected to uh, uh, white nodes. These are word nodes here, so we can build a word and document uh, connection graph here. Uh, you can also find that there are some graph, graph links that links to uh, word turn nodes here. Uh, this is based on the word, uh, word, word correlations. To, learn, uh, to, con to better construct the graph, we can uh, try to build the corresponding adjacency matrix uh, based on several criteria. We can use the pairwise mutual information if uh, two nodes, two neighbor nodes are words, we can compute the PMI values. The PMI values means the major the correlation between two uh, words. If two words uh, PMI values higher than zero, we can consider they are they are they are uh, correlate significant. So we can con construct the age between two word now here. And uh, to have the uh, to depict the uh, to depict the the uh, interaction uh, degree between document and word now, we can compute T by DF. If the TF value scores get higher, so they have strong correlations between uh, this word and the corresponding document. So we can using this criteria to build the address matrix that depicts the input word document graph. Okay, with the word document graph, uh, 
we can try to consider the test classification is try to classify every document node uh, is a no classification test. So we can apply a graph neural network model like GCN to learn the representation of every document node in this graph. And eventually uh, we can use in uh, the learn uh, representation vector of every document node to produce the final classification outcome. Okay, okay. this is the a very general idea that apply genome for test classification. What you uh, all you need to do is try to build a, a world document graph uh, with some criteria that uh, let us to compute the adjacent metrics. Then you can simply apply uh, uh, genome models uh, to try to consider the test classification as no as the no classification task. Okay, so uh, given we have time limits, let me uh, quickly. Uh, what up this talk? In this talk, uh, we try to convey, uh, try to deliver some ideas of how can we apply gram neural network to different kinds of data science applications, uh, including recommended system typical data learning and the natural language processing. Uh, all these tests can be uh, considered, try to then uh, apply gram neural network for different kinds of graph data, including homogeneous, uh, heterogeneous, or uh, even invisible graph. In, uh, for example, in uh, test classifications, we try to first build a graph uh, to uh, represent the latent uh, interaction between document and work, because originally it is invisible to, un to have the connections between a uh, work and document. So uh, when we are trying to apply graph machine learning, the key step is to formulating the graph. We have different kinds of uh, application scenario uh, we try to we need to first realize that uh, which kind of graph data can we use to represent the original data entities with the properly uh, graph formulations then we can uh, consider that uh, the kinds of graph is the uh, input data and uh, apply the graph machine learning which is graph neural network to learn to project from graph data x uh, to the, our precision target y and the, the precision target task can be the uh, widely used uh, no classification and link prediction. So uh, here has here's the list of some tech home. Uh, why powerful is graph uh, machine learning? Uh, the key idea I believe uh, is that uh, we can try to uh, leverage the connection between data entities because uh, in conventional machine learning, every data instance uh, are in, in uh, separately and independently consider uh, the learn to project from X to Y. However, in graph machine learning, we have the connections. We can use in the neighbor uh, based on the graph structure to let the supervised information propagate uh, among data instance. And uh, if we stack multiple layer of uh, gram neural network, we can further uh, leverage the high order connections between data instance uh, to let us learn better the representation. And uh, the learning of graph structure uh, uh, can be combined uh, with no features to generate the no, the no embeddings to let us have more information to, to learn embedding and uh, to uh, provide high quality uh, embedding for downstream uh, prediction tasks. So how to bring the uh, grand machine into your uh, data science project? I, I, I would suggest uh, you can ask yourself or your teams uh, to, for, to, uh, to answer the following five questions before you apply uh, grand machine into your project. The first is you need to understand what is the data entities, what, is, what can be considered as the node in the graph, and how to define the age. It can be predefined by some criteria or uh, the ages can be uh, 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 can be access uh, from the original data. You need to understand what can you uh, access the, and the use the, using the information to construct the age. Then your test can be converted to what kind of uh, graph machine learning test. Uh, can it be no classification or link predictions? You can try to come up with some idea on these uh, questions. Uh, after you prepare the graph data, you can properly choose uh, some brand new machine learning model like GCN, then you can change and then validate the result, try to see whether or not uh, the learning of with graph structures can uh, bring performance improve. Okay, so uh, this, this is the talk um, on graph machine learning. I hope uh, you can uh, learn some things and uh, have some insights from graph data and uh, machine learning and uh, 
uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will very welcome to uh, accept uh, and uh, try to uh, provide some answers. Thank you. Hey, thanks for Dr. Chandali for such an excellent speech. Uh, I believe all of the audience have learned a lot from this speech. Um, actually, my research um, interest also focused on graph representation learning, but after listening to Dr. Lee's speech, I found that there are still a okay, lot of... Um, I think uh, from Slido, I, I just find that there are some questions here, so let me quickly... Uh, browse these questions and provide some answers. Okay, here, um, the, the first question is that, how is time series analysis applied by graph uh, neural network to minorities? The graph can only present the relationship in fixed time. Thank you. Okay, to briefly understand yeah. these questions, uh, uh, the most intuitive uh, idea is try to separate the uh, time series into different uh, stages. And uh, you can try to uh, use in, uh, to measure the similarities between different uh, time series uh, at each stage to build graph. For example, you may have, for example, 10 stages in 10 series. So you can build 10 graphs. And uh, the 10 graphs are uh, temporally dependent. So you can uh, generate the non embedding uh, for graph, uh, for each step graph. and. Uh, then apply recurrent neural network to then the correlations in the temporal domain. So I, I would suggest you to first uh, separate the, the time series data, then apply genome to for AB stage time series data, then uh, using sequential models to learn the temporal correlation. This is the one of the uh, basic and the popular form for genome uh, based time series analysis. And uh, the the second question is that. Um, Currently, genome require many layer stack for capture long range relationship. Will transformer like model the similar to the cases of a CV task? Yes, actually, uh, to an answer these questions, um, uh, yes, in fact, transformer like models are now. Uh, try to combine with graph data. I remember, remember that maybe one or two months ago, the transformer-based approach can be, uh, has already outperformed the typical genome-based model. By simply consider AV data elements in the graph into the input of transformer. For example, you can just consider uh, node IDs and edge IDs and the edge directions, or even uh, node stable or, or some node feature as the input of transformer and try to uh, let the data element in the graph as the input of transformer uh, that performs uh, the trend with different kinds of uh, downstream tasks like no classification and unique predictions and many other uh, downstream classification uh, tasks can learn better and the general and the robust uh, representation vectors for every node in the graph. And the performance has to be very very dates to outperform typical genome-based model. So I believe transformer like model can have very high potentials to uh, combine with typical genome-based model because I believe a typical genome-based model uh, has its uh, uh, advantages uh, compared to transformer like models. This is my answer. Okay, <clears throat> then the, the, the next question is that would you provide a presentation slide after the war? Oh, yes. Yeah, I maybe I can provide my slide to to PyCom then, then, then share to those interests in this uh, topic. And then the next question is that is it possible to apply pre chain techniques that transform for um, for children? Yes, absolutely. Uh, actually, they are, uh, we have uh, in the uh, progress of grand neural network and grand machine learning, uh, uh, people have already uh, developed some pre training techniques for graph data. For example, uh, without any uh, label on nodes, uh, one can try to uh, one can uh, one can try to using some self supervision uh, signals. For example, the pure graph structures or even nodes initial attribute values can be the prediction target. And then all of them can be used to pre-train the non-embeddings or to pre-train the genome model weight. 
then we can fine tune the model weight to the downstream uh, test like no classification. So actually, yes, uh, we can apply the pre-training techniques, but we need to first uh, recognize what is what are our uh, pre-training targets that can be self-supervised information in the graph. Okay, then the next question is that in recommend the systems students have to use more or less in this instance than collaborative filtering. Uh, using more instance. Uh, yeah, I I think that more or less uh, maybe in, uh, actually uh, compared to a CFS method, the input uh, uh, to GNN is the same, uh, which means that what we all what we need to provide is the list of user and item interaction uh, list data. So I think there is no uh, much difference between the inputs in GNN and the CF based model. Okay, then uh, I see that there are one additional question is when our graph data uh, updates continuously, how to update our genome embeddings without retraining? Oh, the, this is a very good question. Uh, actually, uh, one very good properties of uh, graph neural network is uh, the inductivity capability. The inductivity capability means that the model weight in genome model is, uh, is associated on there. It is not associated on a node or data instance. So when we are when when we have already trained the general models with learnable model weights, uh, uh, then uh, we have new data that uh, come uh, in hand. So we need to retrain our model. We can simply uh, using the learn model weight to update or to produce the embedding for new coming uh, nodes. And uh, uh, because the model model weight is associated on the, the layer wise, not on the data instance, so uh, we can we need to retrain our model, and then we can uh, produce the embedding for uh, every newcoming nodes uh, in in the uh, in the continuous updating scenario. Yeah, so this is my answer. You can try to. Uh, Use something, some of the keyword inductive learnings in graph neural network to understand it more in these directions. My answer is that uh, uh, for newcoming now, it is uh, not uh, necessary to retrain the models and to update the general embeddings. Okay, so I believe uh, most of the questions has been answered. So if you have more questions, uh, I will very welcome to accept uh, the messages for you know, using email. You can find me here, or you can uh, you can find me in uh, Gator Town. I will be there uh, for a while. Okay, this is my uh, answers to slide or questions. Okay. Thanks for Dr. Lee's sharing and thank you for answering audience questions in detail. I believe no matter our audience are beginners at graph machine learning or not, all of us uh, have benefited a lot from this sharing. Okay, so now we have come to the end of today's first keynote. If the audience still have some questions for Dr. Lee, please come to the region R0, which is on the left-hand side of the current stage, and we can have more interaction with our keynote speakers. Okay, so thanks all of the audience for your participation, and thanks Dr. Chen Lee again for your informative sharing today.